Hey everyone, ahlan wa sahlan fikum. Many months ago I made a video introducing the most important verbs you need to know to talk about coming and going, like rah, rawah, tila, nizl, and so on. These verbs are really fundamental because they describe the path of motion, to go, to come, to return, etc. Today we're going to talk about some more verbs about movement, but this time focusing on the manner of motion, walking, riding the bus, sitting, standing, and much more. Okay, first we need to start with some basics. Even though we've been talking about movement, I still haven't given you the verb to move in Arabic. That's because there are actually quite a few of them. So let's explore what they mean right now. The most basic verb meaning to move, so the one with the most generic meaning, is harrak. This generally means to physically move something from one place to another. And actually, this root also gives us the word harakah, meaning movement. Anyway, notice that harrak is in form two, which suggests that you're carrying out an action onto something else, as in harrak al-albi, move the box. As many form two verbs though, it has a form five counterpart that has the same meaning, but where the action is done by and onto the subject itself. So if I want to tell you to move yourself, then I would say itharrak. So again, harrak means to move something, whereas itharrak means to move oneself or just to move. Speaking of moving oneself, the verb zah has a very similar meaning. It means to move over, implying a short distance, possibly to make space for something else. So harrak al-ulbi and zih al-ulbi are both perfectly valid. But zah suggests more that you're moving it out of the way, whereas harrak is more universal. Note that zah is both transitive and intransitive. So even instead of itharrak, I could say zih shway, move over a bit. The next verb na'al also means to move, but we have to unpack it a little bit. Na'al is somewhat more abstract or indirect than harrak, as it's not really used to talk about physically moving things. Rather, its meaning is more to transfer something or to change the position of something, as in na'alu al-mahal la mawqatani, they move the shop to a new location. As you can see, they didn't literally pick up the shop and move it, but rather they changed its location. While we still say to move in English, in Arabic, this sense is conveyed by na'al. Other uses of na'al are similarly abstract, as in the verb to gossip, which in the dialect is na'al al-haki, literally to transfer the talk, passing on stories to the next person. Even a sentence like na'alu al-mustashfa, which conveys a meaning more similar to harrak, uses na'al because even though you're literally taking the person to the hospital, the key point of the sentence is that the previous facility or place was unsuitable, so the sick person was transferred to a more suitable location. Unlike harrak, na'al doesn't really have an intransitive counterpart in the dialect. It would sound like saying transfer yourself. But actually one meaning of na'al is already sort of intransitive. To move, as in to move house. Na'alna la bayt jadid abil shahr. We moved to a new house last month. Actually, there are several ways of saying this in the dialect, from the most specific, na'al, to the most vague or general being rahal, meaning to move away or to leave the country and so on. This verb can actually mean to wander or to travel from place to place as well. And the noun rihla means a journey or a trip. So the verb rahal itself suggests more of a long-term move in an outward direction, to move away. Until you get comfortable using na'al and rahal though, I recommend using the verb second with a movement verb. First of all, second means to live or reside somewhere, and in the present we use the active participle, as in anasakin fi Armenia. But you can easily modify this verb with a movement verb, as in ijit askun fi Armenia, to basically being I moved to Armenia, although literally it's I came to live in Armenia. But the good thing about this phrasing is that it doesn't really have the various other connotations of na'al and rahal, so you can use it very broadly for any situation and make it mean whatever you want it to mean. Plus, second is a really important verb in its own right. Well, I've already spent pretty much half the video just explaining how to say to move in Arabic. Fortunately, the rest is much more straightforward. Next, we're going to talk about actually moving the body, starting with the verb am, meaning to get up. Just like in English, this can mean either getting up from your chair, yalla um, or even getting up in the morning, yom umt bakir. While there are specific verbs in the dialect for standing up and waking up, am is useful for covering both. Some of you may know that in standard Arabic, am can mean to carry out or start doing something. But in the dialect, this sounds pretty formal and other terms are usually used instead. One last fun fact about am is that in form three, awam means to resist, as in al-mu'awame dud al-ihtilal. It's interesting because in English, we might say to rise up, which is just like a more intense form of to get up, am. Anyway, the actual verb to stand up is wa'af. This is in form two because it's originally a transitive verb, meaning to stop something as in what if is sayyara, stop the car. The transitive version of this verb is in the form one with, which actually technically means to stand or rather to stop in place. But honestly, this is not used as much as what if itself. So if you just say to someone what if, it would be interpreted as stand up. 
That being said, the active participle of the form one verb is used to say standing. So an awaif bil qurbe means I'm standing at the corner. As for sitting, the verb is ad. The pronunciation of this word is obviously a bit tricky, so if it helps at all, remember that you can practice some of these terms by pronouncing the qa as ga so that you can at least hear the letter. This articulation is not really mainstream in Palestine, but it's not out of the ordinary either, as it's the norm among Bedouin Palestinians, and it is mainstream in Jordan. Anyway, it's up to you. With regard to usage, what's important to know is that like wa'if, this verb isn't really used in the present tense. Instead, the active participle is used. So, an a'ad bil kursi means I'm sitting on the chair. But this verb is actually way more versatile than just that. For one, a'ad in particular can mean staying in a place, as in an a'ad bil bayt, which can mean either I'm sitting at home or I'm staying at home. In an even more abstract sense, a'ad can mean to keep on doing something, as in huwa a'ad yi'ra tul al yom, he stays reading all day. So keep that in mind. Wa'af can mean to stand up or to stop, while a'ad can mean to sit down or to continue. Anyway, one more possible interpretation of a'ad is to hang out, as in khallina na'ad bukra. Literally, this means let's sit down tomorrow, but the meaning is of course more like let's hang out tomorrow, perhaps at a coffee shop or something. But what if we don't want to sit down and instead we want to go out? To walk in the dialect is masha. An ambarih mashayt la'andu. I walked to his place yesterday. You can also change this verb to form five to focus on the act of walking itself, devoid of any direction or purpose. So, tamasha bil muntaza means he went for a walk in the park. Speaking of going for a walk, the word tosh means to roam around, but it's actually similar to the expression to go out in English. Ana toshish ma ashabi, I'm out with my friends. Biddak na'ud walan tosh, do you want to chill or go out? Anyway, the verb masha itself isn't limited to people, unlike to walk in English. For instance, is-sayyarat ma'am b'timshi means the cars aren't moving. In this case, the meaning of masha is more like advancing or moving forward, since cars obviously don't walk. Anyway, one really, really, really important form of masha is the active participle mashi. See, we actually do use the present tense anabamshi to say I'm walking. Instead, mashi is used figuratively to mean that works or okay. Okay, mashi. Speaking of cars, let's end with two more ways of getting around, driving or riding a vehicle. As in standard Arabic, to drive in the dialect is sa. So try to say su lal su, drive to the market. Yes, although the words are unrelated, the command form of sa ends up looking the same as the word su, meaning market. Anyway, I don't know about you, but cars are way outside my budget, so I ride the bus everywhere. In Arabic, to ride any sort of vehicle is rikib, which by extension also means to get on the bus, train, etc. You would have to use a preposition though. Rikibit il qatar, I rode the train. Rikibit bil qatar, I got on the train. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed part two on movement verbs, where we focused on the manner of motion rather than the path. So standing and sitting, moving to other countries, and riding the bus. Your homework for today is to comment a sentence using the verb you found most interesting or that you didn't know about before. Or as always, feel free to suggest a topic for a future video. And I'll see you then. <laughs> وتذكروا اني عملت مصادر لتعلم اللهجه الفلسطينيه تقدروا تلاقوها بالموقع التبعي اللي مكتوب تحت بالدسكربشن ونشوفكم المره الجايه